If you want to know what a gimbal is and what it does, you are in the right place. Well, at least I know I am. I'll speak to you right after the intro. So welcome to a new vlog, my name is Mamor. If you are new to my channel, I usually share video making tips and tutorials as well for video editing and whatever kind of content creation. So consider to subscribe right now. This vlog is going to be about gimbals, what they are and what they do. And I want to go back to basics and thanks to Amsterdam Calling, one of my followers, which actually highlighted this uh, problem of content creators in general and youtubers usually we talk about camera gear and we show camera gear without really explaining what they are and what they do so uh, what amsterdam colony was asking me was to focus my vlogs to beginners instead of professionals already and that's what i try to do in this vlog so we're going to start from the basics and we're going to cover what the gimbals are and you might have noticed i'm walking with the camera in my hands and it's very shaky and we're going to put it right now on the gimbal and let's spot the difference and here i am on a gimbal as you can see the footage is much smoother and that's what the gimbal does basically a gimbal absorbs all the shakiness of your shots and makes your image much more stabilized and smooth let's briefly talk about the history of gimbals and actually before the gimbals we used to have mechanical stabilizers called steadicam or flycam flycam was actually a brand of steadicams but with the time flycam became another word to indicate steadicams and i'm sure you've seen already these tools on television and film sets the big difference between the gimbal and the steadicams is that the steadicam is using weights to balance the camera on top of your stabilizer a gimbal on the other side is a mechanical stabilizer that uses three axes of rotation to keep a camera steady via three internal motors which compensate for unintended camera motion and use algorithms to detect when the camera is being moved intentionally or not. The gimbals nowadays are run through chargeable batteries that of course last different durations according to the camera weight, the gimbal size and many other factors. So how do gimbals work? We have already said that a gimbal features three different axes. One it's called the tilt or pitch which is the one that allows the camera to face up or down then we have the pan or yo down here at the bottom usually which allows you to pan the camera from left to right and vice versa and then we have the roll axis which is the one at the back and it allows to rotate the camera and spin the camera actually clockwise or anti-clockwise there are different types of gimbals this is a three axis stabilizer but we also have two axis stabilizers like the Juin Smooth X. If you want to check the differences, you can also check my previous uh, videos right here or in the description tab. And of course, you will find all the products listed in the description tab too. It's worth mentioning, of course, that the three axis stabilizers stabilizes your image better and the two axis stabilizer is a bit less accurate. However, the three axis stabilizers gimbals are usually more expensive and heavier than a two axis stabilizer. As you can see right here, there are different sizes of gimbals, also different weights. This is definitely heavier than this, and they can support different cameras. The DJI Ronin S, for example, can support DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, or even small cinema cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. 
the Gwin Crane M2, for example, can hold GoPros, so action cameras, but also smartphones. So this is very handy if you have small cameras, action cameras, or even small mirrorless cameras, like the Sony 6400, 65, and 6600 family. And of course, there are bigger gimbals also for the big cinema cameras like the Alexa, Ari Alexa, and so on, Blackmagic Orsa, all the big chunky cameras. I have to say they're quite easy to use. Of course, they take practice. To turn them on, they usually have a button on the side or at the bottom, and then the gimbal just turns on and it starts working, as you can see. There are different modes for the gimbals, which means it can operate in different ways. And usually we have a follow mode, which is indicated by F almost all the time. And what that does, basically, whatever movement you do with your hand and your wrist, the camera will follow that movement. So if I tilt up, the camera will tilt up. If I pan to the side, the camera will follow. Then we have the pan follow, which means the tilt is locked and the gimbal will only follow my panning. Then we have a lock mode indicated by L on this specific gimbal. And what it does, it locks all the axes. So whatever I do with my hand, the camera will be facing the original direction I point it to. Then you also have the active or POV modes. It depends on the gimbal, the name changes. What the gimbal does with this mode, basically it will follow whatever movement you do, panning, tilting, even uh, diagonally. So it's a very free movement and it's usually used for quick actions or sports. Sometimes you also have the vortex mode, which is also called inception. And it gives you this particular effect where the camera is rotating through your uh, environment. How do we operate a gimbal? You've got different ways. The first way is to use the joystick that comes on the gimbal. And it's very simple, it's like a video game. You literally just spin your joystick to left to right or up and down, and the gimbal we will follow accordingly your action. The second way, which is actually the way I use most of the times, is the wrist. So just use your wrist and the gimbal will follow you. That takes a bit of practice as well. So you want to understand how the gimbal reacts as you uh, turn your wrist basically and your hand. But you can achieve very smooth results. As I mentioned, you can operate the gimbal from remote and that's what happens usually on film sets. Sometimes you have an operator just holding the gimbal, another operator using the focus of the camera, so is a focus puller and it pulls the focus of the camera, and another operator operates the actual gimbal, so it spins and pan and tilts the gimbal accordingly to the shot they need to take. So sometimes you have a team of three people operating a single gimbal. You can operate the gimbal through apps. Usually these gimbals come with an app and you can find different modes and options as well, like time lapses. You have a tracking mode where you can film yourself if you are, if you are a self shooter. So very handy sometimes and they could be quite fun. I guess we have covered what a gimbal is and I hoped it was clear enough. To understand more about gimbals, stay tuned on this channel because we're going to understand how to balance the camera on the gimbal, but also we will talk about specific movements you can achieve with your gimbal. I can give you quickly a few brands of gimbals and you can find, as we mentioned, the Jiwin. It's a Chinese company. We have the DJI for bigger gimbals, but you also find Mavi, Goodsen, gimbals, a lot of stuff that you can find once again in the description tab. For today, I thank you for watching. I hope the video was helpful somehow. And uh, if you want me to cover more basics of photography and videography, please drop a comment down here below and I'll be very happy to cover this subject for you in the next videos. God bless you and stay tuned for more content. Memories fall up the road